today. What's up? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Uh, you know how we do around here. Grab your vices, um, chill out, relax, and let's get straight to it. Um, this is episode 46 of Straight Forward with Miss B. I hope everybody has had a wonderful, wonderful week. We are um, into the new year, 2023. So I hope everybody has set themselves some goals. Um, we talked about it on episode 45 for individuals who do make um, New Year's resolutions. Hopefully you guys have mapped that out, have your vision board prepared and um, is already Take an action, you know, on those things um, that you plan on achieving this year. And uh, outside of that, it's just been a lot, lot, lot going on in the streets here. I tell you the truth, man. I hope everybody, um, you know what? I just want to start off with saying everybody just always pay attention to your surroundings. You know what I mean? And when I say surroundings, I'm not talking about just like your environment, your front yard, your backyard, down the street. You know, I'm not just talking about that. Um, but definitely um, make sure you pay attention to, you know, people that surround you, um, whether it be friends, family, it could be co-workers. You just never know. People who... There's people that will be in your face, smile, crack a few jokes, key key with you. But in the back of their brain, they're just plotting, they scheming on you, trying to figure out what they can, you know, get about you, how they can benefit off of you. You know, and I, I really, really dis despise those type of people. So hopefully, you know, everybody that's listening have some level level of uh, discernment, excuse me, discernment. I'm tongue twisted there for a second, but have some level of discernment um, when you, you know, just mix and mingle. Sometimes you can become too mixy, and when you become too mixy, you tend to just be around a lot of no good people without even realizing it. So hopefully you guys are individuals that keep keep a small circle. You know what I'm saying? Of the people that you you know truly, truly is there for you, support you, love you, um, and rock out with those people. You know what I'm saying? Keep your circle small. All right, so going into today's episode of the podcast, um, the blind leading the blind. That is the phrase we are going to go with today. And to start off, um, defining that phrase is when a person who is unsure on how to do something or they may not be that knowledgeable of certain topics, um, but that person then begins to help someone else who is also unsure <laughs> of that particular, you know, topic or skill set, and they just don't know how to do it themselves I either. So, um, blind leading the blind, um, but not to take that phrase or metaphor, if you want to call it, um, take it, you know, directly, meaning, you know, just directly as it seems. Um, we just going to elaborate on it a little bit, a little bit further, expand its reach a little bit. So, this week, you know, I'm shuffling through social media pages, scrolling just like, you know, millions of others. And I came across um, the drama that was um, 
bubbling up between um, Gucci Man, who is a hip hop um, record label owner. He's also uh, what we call kind of like a legendary hip hop artist himself. He's one of the, I guess, pioneers, as you would call it, of the trap music here um, that kind of made its way from the South. Um, he hails from Alabama, but he's mostly, I guess, associated with um, Atlanta, specifically like the, I guess you would call it the southeast side of Atlanta, um, Jonesboro, that area over there is where he kind of made a name for himself. Mr. Guwap himself, but he's um basically was tied up in a little bit a little bit of scandal. Um he had an artist which um he kind of called his protege. Um he had signed him not too long ago, um Big Scar. Um however, unfortunately Big Scar um he passed away. He was 22 years old. He passed away um, kind of ironically on December 22nd of 2022. Isn't that something? 22, 22, 22. Um, he was from Memphis, I believe. And um, he died under some unfortunate circumstances. Um, they said he had had prior medical kind of uh, medical things happening to him. Um, I think he was in a car accident at one point. Um, and then this particular uh, what causes death um, may have been associated with an unintentional overdose. But again, that is alleged. I'm not 100 percent sure of that. But you guys can definitely Google Google it yourselves to find out. Um, however, he was also um, Big Scar was a part of the 2022 XXL um, freshman list. So he was, you know. Amongst those um, pristine, up and coming freshmen um, hip hop artists, that once you make that freshman list, um, you kind of herald as, like I said, the next star, the next one up. You know what I mean? To become multi platinum stars. So um i'm sure him you know scar and his family was very proud along with gucci man uh, very proud of him making it to that list um however um you know like i said this week i don't know it was kind of like one person that claimed to be i guess a brother i don't know if he was an actual brother or maybe a cousin um but he came out and made a video basically calling Gucci man out. He was blasting him, um, on his Instagram video, calling him Fugazi and insinuated that Gucci did not pay for big scars funeral, but kind of made, um, the kind of made, made it seem as though he was going to be paying for everything. Right. Um, or at least that's what the family thought. Um, however, Gucci Man's own wife, the lovely Keisha Kaior, um, produced her own receipts. She showed a ten thousand dollar receipt that they paid um, to the funeral home, and um, later she also showed photos of flower, some very very nice lush flower arrangements. And mind you, flowers are not cheap, not cheap at all. Flower arrangements, and then also there was another receipt of ten thousand dollars. Um, that was supposedly a check cut by Atlantic Records because 1017 label is um, has a partnership through Atlantic. So, hey, the wifey came through with receipts. With receipts. Um, so with that being said, here comes um, a female. I don't know if she was a relative cousin or whatnot she also then came out on behalf of big scar and the family um basically just saying what's ten thousand we pay sixty thousand she says something about putting them in a uh 
he was cremated, but then she mentioned something about a casket. And then she mentioned something about the, um, what do you call those things? Not, uh, uh, ooh, I forgot the name of them things. Well, you, you know, the things where they have like, um, usually wealthy families may put, um, not a mausoleum. That may be what it's called, but if I'm wrong, sorry. <laughs> um, but she said something about them putting Big Scar in one of those so people can't be coming to buy his, you know, coming by his grave and digging it up and doing some old shisty shit to his grave. Um, but basically, it then, you know, just kind of shitting on Gucci Man and told him that they was going to keep the 1017 diamond um necklaces the chains that you know he usually gifts his artists he was gonna keep the ones that he gave the big scar and told gucci man to get it back in blood get it back in blood so i thought that was extremely extremely interesting you know extremely interesting and so that made me begin to think. Um, it made me think about. So Gucci Man, he's known to be a great businessman. Like I said, he's a legend in the game. He's played an intricate part in the rise to fame for multiple artists. If you mention. Young Thug, if you mention Ghana, if you mention like Waka Flocka, if you mention OJ the Juice Man, if you mention Rollo, like all of these people, he was able to kind of AR and see something in them um, to where he helped put them on. And, you know, a lot of them was able to, you know, get that light shined on them and they made something out of their rap careers. You know what I'm saying? They became known. They became popular. Um, some sold millions of records. So he's 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 played an intricate part in those lives. You know what I'm saying? He definitely has an eye for talent, right? Um, however, some may say in the past few years, p- past few years, Gucci has been trying to build up this new um like I said, this new roster of talent on the 1017, 1017 label. Um, however, a lot of the artists that he brings on, um, you know, they have history into the street life. And some would say from a business standpoint, you could might as well consider them to be a liability. If you guys hear thundering in the background, hey, I'm in the middle of, was supposed to be like thunderstorms, a possible tornado. I'm just going to keep, you know, keep praying at this point. Um, but try to complete this podcast for you all. But like back to the story. So you could consider them to be a liability. You have uh, Fujiano. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Pooh Shiesty. Like I said, Rollo, Pablo One. A lot of them either have had, these cr- have criminal charges um sitting in i think pablo uh one if i'm pronouncing his name right i think he's been caught up in some type of rico case pushiesty is currently incarcerated fujiato i think he might have been incarcerated at one point rollo of course we know he's incarcerated so all of these individuals you know and then I think he might have had someone else on his label that passed away. Um, not only Big Scar, but someone else may have passed away as well. But it seems like within the last couple of years, they these things have been happening to his artists back to back to back to back to back. So it's like, is there some type of omen? Like, what's going on? Is these just things that's ironically, you know, just out of the blue happening? Um, happening to Gucci Man's um label. We don't really know. Um, We don't really know. But some may think that or wonder if Gucci Man is, you know, blindly maybe blindly leading these young artists. Or some may ask the question, 
is he signing them as a method to either help turn their lives around or is he promoting and urging the ongoing glorification of street life? Because it's like on one hand, because every so often, I don't know if you, if some of you guys follow him, every so often he will post on social media, hey, I'm offering a million dollars to sign to 1017. And then, you know, I'm sure he probably has employees or A&Rs in his label that kind of scout for talent, whether it's on social media, whether it's out, you know, out and about. But I'm sure he has them scouting for talent. Um, but many just wonder, like, he's scouting for these individuals for a reason, I guess, to help, you know, see to see who's going to pop. I'm sure that's one of his goals. Because Gucci himself, he, put, he constantly put out music, but he's at an age now, a family man. He, I'm sure he just want to sit back and enjoy the fruits of his labor, and I'm sure he wants to, you know, help somebody, another artist, young artist, kind of help them elevate their career to the point, um, to to the point where they're selling, you know, platinum records, and you know, the same way that he did. You know what I'm saying? What businessman wouldn't want to see his a protege kind of rise to fame in that way? However, it's it seemed to be, I don't want to say it's backfiring on him, but it just seems to be at this point that something may not necessarily be working because of the artist that he, he chooses. You know, a lot of times when you're in those positions of where, hey, I got the funding to help someone else with their career, right? And a lot of times we want to lend a hand to someone who just not less fortunate, but, you know, just maybe in dire needs of an opportunity, a great opportunity. And I'm sure he sees those young men. They got talent. They can, you know, they, they represent the city, they city or, you know what I'm saying? They got talent. They may be good writers, singers, whoever the case may be. And he wants to possibly, you know, throw that bone to them. But at the same time, as a businessman, you would think that, again, it goes back to having discernment or just a better understanding and outlook from a business perspective. Hey, do I want to take on that weight? Do I want 1017 to take on that weight of, you know what I'm saying, dealing with, you know, dealing with these dudes that have history in the streets. They about the street life. So it, it really just have me always kind of wondering, like, exactly what, what, what is Gucci man doing? And I just don't want to single him out. I just use this situation just kind of, you know, to help kind of, pull the topic together um but there's I'm sure there's plenty other labels who kind of operate like this and who have these type of artists signed to them um and you know shit just be happening to his to their artists but the reason why it stands out so much with Gucci man is because it seems like damn near everybody that he has signed to the label they're just wrapped up in some mess. They're either dealing with some criminal charges, they're locked up, or they're no longer here. So it's like, what is going, you know, what's really, really going on? Now, I would think, and I wanted to pull up something that I think Joe Button also made a comment. Um, I didn't really get a chance to read the entire article. I want to say it was either on TMZ, I believe. I didn't read it all, but he made some statements as well. Um, and I'm sure, you know, with the history and knowledge that Joe Button has, I'm sure he probably made some good statements. A lot of people don't like Joe Button, but I think he's a pretty cool guy. 
He's a pretty cool guy. Um, but um, what I was gonna say. He made some comments, but like I said, for all of these individuals, especially street dudes or, or dudes who have at once in their life been connected to um, to that life, when you go into business, you have to, and, and you want to make money, right? You have to understand that, hey, sometimes you can't take on certain liabilities. You know, you can't, you can't. Not if you plan on your business to, you know, be able to withstand and, and be long-term and you see long, you know, see long-term um, positive things happening for your business and, you know, making money and wealth. You can't really, or you shouldn't really tap into, you know, keep tapping into that street life. You have to diversify. Now that's one thing that I did want to say that Gucci man should do. Gucci man may need to diversify when it comes to his business. Start looking at other people. Start looking at, I can't even think of someone as far as like a singer that he has signed to him. I don't, and if he has, maybe somebody can put me up on game, but maybe looking into an RB, R&B artist. I know he's tried to sign female artists before. Um, I want to say um, Asian doll was signed to him at one point, but I think she left. Um, maybe shoot, look for a pop artist, look for, like I said, R&B, look for maybe an R&B guy who sing, you know, it's like diversify at this point. It's nothing wrong with diversifying. I know he probably want 1017 to kind of represent a certain aesthetic when it comes to hip hop or a certain genre, you know, within a sub genre within hip hop. Um, however, if it's not making you money or if it's, 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 you know, you continue to have loss after loss after loss in whatever form or fashion that it comes in, um, as a businessman, then maybe you should, you know, maybe you should do some changing, changing up. There's nothing wrong with switching up, switching up the program. Nothing at all. You know, so with all of that being said, it may be a case where either he don't know or he just refused to, you know, look at things that way. And meaning he refused to kind of diversify. And if that's the case, then you you limit yourself in what you are giving to the artist that signed to the label. And when I say what you are giving, I'm not just talking about financially, but I'm talking about just from a business standpoint. I'm sure they look to him look to him as inspiration. You know what I'm saying? They look to him to, to be, um, to be mentored. You know, they want to gain some understanding of how to properly do business. But if you're, your you yourself is not properly doing business, then how can you lead or teach someone else to do proper business? And I think that is where the blind is leading the blind. But like I said, this is, I don't, I'm just having a discussion. Some of this stuff is alleged. Don't take it as fact. I have no idea who, Gu I mean, I know who Gucci Man is, but I've never met Gucci Man. I like Gucci Man music. I'm a supporter of him, have been for quite some time. Um... But it's, like I said, these things happening back to back to back on his label and with his artists is very concerning. And I want him to have longevity with 1017. Like I said, he had have, he have some little new babies. He had a ba little baby and a 
that may be one or two years old and then his pre- his wife is pregnant now um i believe they have other kids but they're you know much older but he has he's he has a whole family so it's like now you're creating generational wealth and i'm sure that you know he wants this 1017 label to um go on for quite some time for years to come you know what i'm saying and and leave it leave it to his kids to continue to run the label um but we definitely want to just you know kind of have a positive um a positive light shined on the label somewhere it just seems like there's just so much negative that's that's that comes with it and we just want all of that to be on the up and up for um mr gucci mr gucci but outside of that conversation um i'm a true crime On another note, I'm a true crime junkie. I be keeping up with shit going on. I don't know how many people, I think I mentioned it last time about this um, Brian Koberger in the Idaho 4 um, situation. Then there's this um, Anna Walsh situation where her husband is suspected of some foul play going on. She just, she was on her way to work to D.C. and supposed to catch a flight. And she just kind of disappeared, but they ended up finding um, blood in the basement and some other stuff and went to a landfill. So it's just a lot going on in the true crime world. (laughs) I didn't realize the true crime world until I started getting into it. I didn't realize it was as huge as it is. (laughs) It's like so many podcasts, so many YouTube channels. But I enjoy watching it all. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I enjoy it. Um, outside of that, um, I don't want to, uh, definitely not going to turn this podcast into a true crime podcast. But there may be stories from time to time that I want to give my two cent on. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Outside of that, um, Of course, you know, you got just your regular, normal gossip that's happening. I don't watch too much reality TV. Maybe I'll have somebody on one day to kind of talk about reality TV. I don't really watch it, but um, but you guys know that we try to do the um, group chat lives on the weekends, preferably on Sundays. Um, this is a long weekend for me this weekend, so we should be going up live on Sunday evening around 8 p.m. on YouTube, and that's straightforward with Miss B, S-T-R, the number 8, F-W-D, with Miss B on YouTube as well, so definitely check us out there. And uh, I think I'm finna get ready to sign, sign, sign out. Um, don't forget you guys, you can always, if you have any topic ideas, if you have a story that you want to just talk about, you can always email me, um, at straightforward, S-T-R-8, F-W-D, media, M-E-D-I-A, at gmail.com, um, just with your ideas, or you can just DM us on social media as well, and, uh, I'll definitely check into that. Um, but as always, follow us on all social media platforms, um, and podcast platforms. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell your mama, tell your auntie, tell your grandma, tell everybody to listen in and support your girl. And, um, until next time, stay safe out there. Peace.